Hi guys, CA Rachana Ranade here and I welcome you all to my Saturday lecture series. In today's lecture, we are going to talk about some basic points about GST. You know, there were there was a joke uh, which was floated on WhatsApp and uh, Alia Bhatt was asked once that uh, what is the full form of GST and she said it is good night, sweet dream and take care. So uh, these days, I guess heroines are competing with each other that who is going to uh, give the most hilarious answer for any question asked. Uh, you have understood about whom I'm talking about, right? So anyways, uh, so that we don't end up giving such messy answers, we are going to start up a separate series which will clear all your basics about GST. Uh, and the intention is not to make you a GST expert, but the intention is to make you as a consumer and even if you are an entrepreneur to make you aware about certain basic concepts of GST. So in today's video, we are going to talk about what is the meaning of GST. We are going to talk about the components of GST. We are going to talk about the registration requirements of GST. And we are also going to talk about what are the different forms which appear in GST at a very basic level, at a layman's level. This video is brought to you by QuickBooks. QuickBooks is an accounting software packaged and developed mainly to help out chartered accountants and small and medium sized businesses. For chartered accountants, the best advantage is that you will be able to track all your work and clients in one place and streamline tasks very easily. Now, if you're a businessman or a professional or even a student who is planning to pursue the CA course or a student who is planning to start his or her own business, then this video is going to be very important because in this video, I'm going to talk about an accounting software which is going to make your life very simple. So please watch this video till the end. So GST is basically goods and services tax. It's both are in plural, plural goods and services tax. Okay. Uh, before the introduction of GST, we had so many taxes in India. We had excise, we had service tax, we had customs, we had VAT, we had CST and so many. We had octroi. It was a complete mess, complete khichdi of all the taxes. So to simplify things, uh, this government BJP in 2014 to 19 regime, their first tenure, they came up with GST and wherein our Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji said that we are introducing you with one nation, one tax and that was GST. Uh, he called it as a good and a simple tax. Is it really good? Is it simple? There are so many uh, different perceptions about, uh, I mean, by various people. So let's understand a little bit more in detail so that you can make your own perception about really is it good and really is it simple or not. I remember that when I was uh, at a restaurant, uh, the day after GST was introduced and uh, the waiter got a bill right next to my table and uh, the customer who was sitting right next to me, he saw the bill and he said, it says CGST is at 9% and SGST is at 9%. And he said, I have listened to Modiji's speech. And he said, it's one tax, one nation. So either charge me CGST or charge me SGST. I'm not going to pay both. Do you think I'm a fool? <laughs> no. So there's a confusion. Why is it said one tax, one nation when there are multiple components of GST? And what are the components of GST? There are three major components. One is CGST, one is SGST, and one is IGST. CGST stands for Central GST, Goods and Services Tax. SG is State GST. And IG, IGST is an integrated GST. Okay. Now, which tax is levied when, when in simple words again, assume that uh, I am selling my lectures to a person who is in Maharashtra. I am from Maharashtra. I am selling lectures to a person in Maharashtra. Then I have to levy two types of taxes. One is CGST, one is SGST. CGST, so basically when I sell lectures to you and when I, whenever I collect taxes from you, then I will pay a part of that to the state government. So I pay... SGST, state GST to Maharashtra government, then CGST, that portion goes to central. Okay. So I don't pay taxes separately. The, the division part, the bifurcation part is done by the tax authorities, but that component, whatever I'm paying. So as a simple example, if I'm paying 18 rupees to the government, then it gets split up as nine plus nine. Nine rupees goes to government of Maharashtra, which is the SGST and nine rupees goes to the center, uh, central government. That is the CGST. Okay. But now it does happen that there are many people who place an order for my lectures even outside Maharashtra. So let us say there's a person from Delhi who has placed an order for my lectures. There's a person from Chennai who has placed uh, order for my lectures. Now what happens? Do I charge CGST and SGST to them? No, I charge IGST. So I hope you have understood. Any sale which takes place within the state is a CGST, SGST. So basically such sale will attract two taxes, CGST, SGST and a sale outside the state will attract IGST, which is an integrated GST. 
Oh, what would be the tax rate for IGST in such a case where CGST is SGST is 9% 9% then for IGST it will be 18% next time so this is a small task that I'm giving to you all I'm sure you might be ordering many products let's say from Amazon then just check out the bill what taxes are charged to you and you must check that if you are from a particular state and if the seller is also from that particular state then has he charged CGST SGST to you or not and if he's from outside the state then he might have charged you IGST so just have a small practical that's a homework from my side okay so is it necessary that every person who is selling some goods or who is rendering a service is every person required to pay is required to collect and pay gst to the government so uh, a simple example take it on a lighter note uh, let's say uh, my building watchman i was going to my office the other day and my watchman said salam ma'am and uh, i said hello hi good morning and he said wait wait, wait where are you going i said i'm going to my office he said that I have provided you a service. I was awake all the night and I was protecting the people of your society so that everyone should sleep very calmly and quietly without any tension. So I have provided you a service. So first pay GST and then go to your office. He said, what is going to happen? No. But then he is also providing a service. That's true. Then who is required to collect GST and who is not required to collect GST? For that, you should know the registration requirements. Okay. So just as an example, if I am collecting GST from you, then it means that I cross the threshold, the minimum requirement, and then it would be mandatory for me to register under GST. So what are the mandatory requirements? For any businessman, basically, I'm talking about businessman, okay? If the turnover of a business, turnover is nothing but sales. If turnover crosses 40 lakhs, then he or she, that business basically is required to uh, get itself registered under GST. If some, some person wants Suomoto, Suomoto is on his or her own wish will, then they can register under GST. Okay, so if you're a small shopkeeper and you say, Are, I want to get registered under GST, I want to tell everyone that I'm registered under GST. Just, just, just out of curiosity, can you register under GST? Yes, you can. That's a voluntary registration. But when is it a mandatory registration? Mandatory registration is that if you cross the threshold of 40 lakh rupees turnover. Okay, uh, one more uh, some important point for you. Uh, if you were to sell your products online, so let us say you're making uh, what some fancy items, some uh, fancy uh, bottles these days, decorative bottles are made by so many girls, uh, some panties and uh, candles and whatnot. And if you want to sell it online, Christmas gifts and all that, then in that case, even if your business has one rupee of turnover because you're selling online, it would be mandatory for you to get yourself registered under GST. Okay, so if you're selling products online, then that 40 lakhs threshold disappears. Okay, so I hope you have understood the registration requirements. There are so many details. I've just covered it at a very basic level. So let's talk about a few forms which you have to file under GST. The number one is GSTR1. Second one is GSTR3B. These two forms are currently uh, required to be filled by various businessmen and uh, professionals. Uh, I'll give you just one one liner about what is GSTR1 and what is GSTR3B. One is basically about it gives so I, as a businessman, I have to give details to the government of India uh, as to how much sale or how much services I have rendered, the worth of that, I have to submit in GSTR 1. So just as an example, uh, if I have sold goods worth rupees 10 lakhs in one month, as an example, okay? If I have sold lectures worth rupees 10 lakhs in a month, as an example, then I have to tell this to the government that yes, I have sold these lectures 10 lakhs worth. On these, I have collected 18% GST and this is my total tax liability. Okay, this is what I have to tell in GSTR 1. Of course, I have to give the details B2B, B2C, all these details have to be given here. B2B is business to business and B2C is business to customer. Okay, then what happens with GSTR 3B? Now, in 3B, basically my tax liability is calculated. Okay, so uh, whatever sales I have done, I'll give you a very simple example. Just pay attention. Assume that I have sold goods worth rupees 100 and I collected 18 rupees GST. Okay, then what is my tax liability? I collected 18 rupees from the customer as a businessman, I have to pay this 18 rupees to the government. Okay. But could it happen that me as a businessman, I have also paid GST to someone? Yes. So I'll give you a simple example. Assume that I'm selling this calculator. Okay. When I sell this calculator, I sell it at 100 rupees, I've collected 18 rupees. Okay. I'm a trader. Okay. So assume I purchased this calculator from a wholesaler at 80 rupees. Okay, I purchased at 80 rupees and I have paid 8 rupees GST as an example to that wholesaler, right? So let's take this, pay attention. 18 rupees collected from the customer, 8 rupees or 
whatever whatever i had said maybe i had said 8 rupees only 8 rupees i have paid to the supplier okay so now i tell the government that 18 rupees collected minus 8 rupees paid i am going to pay you only 10 rupees okay that is known as a concept of gst credit in my next video i am going to talk about this same concept of gst credit in a bit more detail i hope as of now you have understood a little bit so i just pay the net amount and not the gross amount collected as a gst to the government okay so this is to be told in GSTR 3B and whatever is the liability I have to pay to the government by 20th of the next month. So right now we are in the month of November. So whatever amount I collect from my customers I have to pay it by 20th of December. I hope you have understood this part as well. In the beginning of the video I had talked about QuickBooks. So now is the time to understand all the features, all the key features of QuickBooks in a much simplified manner. The very first feature of QuickBooks is that you can get a real-time access anywhere. So what does it mean? Even if I'm, I'm in my office or even if I'm at some other place or even on a vacation, let us say, but if I want to tell some important data, some urgent data to my client, it'll be very easy for me because I can choose when to access that data on what device also I can, I can directly access it through my laptop or through my mobile. It becomes very simple to track all the data and very important at a real time basis. One more very important feature of QuickBooks is that I can now also uh, give certain permissions amongst my staff. So just as an example, if I want one of my staff member to edit the accounting entries, I can give an edit only option. To another employee, if I want to ensure that he or she will be able to only view it but not edit it. So such specific permissions, me as a chartered accountant, I can definitely uh, assign certain uh, permissions among my staff members. So let's turn to the second feature. One more very important feature, but this is only for chartered accountants. There will be a great increase in the productivity of your team. And how can this happen? So I'll just take you through a screenshot of this QuickBooks dashboard. What I can do is I can assign certain tasks to my team members. So for example, I'm saying that one of my team member A has to manage the GSTR filings. Team member B has to look after TDS. Team, number, team member C will have to check whether all the reports, the weekly reports, monthly reports, whether they are uh, properly prepared on time or not. So for that, I can easily assign tasks to my members. I can also set deadlines for them and I can check whether they are doing it or not because I get real-time updates. So here you can see that today, one, two, three, four, I have to do all these things. Uh, week four, what I have to do, uh, or this week, these are the four tasks which I have to do. Next week, these are the six tasks that I have to do. Uh, in next 30 days, what tasks I have to do? All this thing at one shot, I can get in one single template. This is going to really simplify the work of chartered accountants. And I'm sure because you have all such permissions wherein you can add team members, you can assign specific roles to them. With this ease of access, definitely the overall productivity of your team is definitely going to increase. Moving on to the next feature, which is I feel a mind blowing feature where you can have multiple users and very important, as a small and medium sized business, you can invite the accountant to view your accounts. So I remember when I was doing my article ship, uh, we also had certain clients who had outsourced accounts writing to us. Okay, so what we used to do, we used to do the accounts writing for them. Once we were done with the entire accounting, then we used to give the data to them. We used to back up the entire data and give it to them. Then only they were in a position to check their books of account. Now what can happen? I can easily access their books of account on a real time basis and so can they. So it will be a seamless uh, connectivity between the CA and the client. And that's the amazing feature number three of QuickBooks. Another amazing feature is about the Bank Connect. Uh, you might have seen other accounting softwares. I will not name any, but it's a very popular software in India, uh, wherein, uh, you know, having bank statement and having BRS is a very tedious thing. I mean, just understand this. Uh, as an accountant, what I am required to do is that I'll have to take a bank statement from the client. I have to enter each and every transaction. Then I have to check which checks are cleared, which are not yet cleared. I'll have to fill in the check dates and then the BRS will be prepared. With QuickBooks, what you can do is directly, you can uh, actually assign or you can link your bank account with QuickBooks account. So automatically your bank entries start getting uh, updated as per the bank's records and you also need not prepare a separate bank reconciliation statement. You have to set certain rules for that. There are certain basic stuff which we are required to do but once that is done 
with no need of separately preparing BRS, that's going to be a very easy task for you. Now, one more important feature is that you can generate hundreds of reports in QuickBooks. You can have a customized P&L, a customized balance sheet. You can even have a, a, an analysis in the form of trends, in the form of uh, a graphical presentation. This will actually simplify a non-commerce person's life because for a non-commerce person to understand the balance sheet becomes a little bit tricky. But if he can see certain graphs and certain trends in front of him, it becomes very easy for him to understand how his business is performing. Now for chartered accountants, the important point is that CA will get a 360 degrees view of the business. One more important feature for a chartered accountant is that you can now easily follow up on the payments because you'll get again online tracking, real time tracking of data. And there are so many more features for even chartered accountants. Now, one more important feature in this same is that you can also easily file your GST returns, which I had discussed GSTR 1, GSTR 3B, with the data which is generated through QuickBooks. So QuickBooks actually simplifies your processes for filing these various GSTR returns as well. Very important feature again is that I can manage all my clients in a single screen now. Here you can see that all these are my clients and I can just quickly go into the data of any single client. Uh, there could be certain clients who are also not using QuickBooks, but still I can get certain limited feature access uh, if the client is even not using QuickBooks. Now, what is the most important point if I get all the uh, clients at one place? Uh, it becomes easy for me to manage and this is like all things at one place. So I remember again uh, when we, we used to require certain invoices from the client, then at that time there was no WhatsApp. So they were they, they used to scan the document, then they used to send it by email. Sometimes the email, we were not able to find where they have actually sent it, on which email, on whose email, all that is cut out. What you can do is this, in QuickBooks only, you can now ask the client to scan the document and that scan document also gets affixed in the same client document on the same page. So it's all at one shot, their accounting data, their bank statements, their invoices, any other document, all at one place. That's the biggest advantage I feel. Now the last point is that even if I purchase QuickBooks and if I am in a difficulty, I'm not able to understand how to use it, then what? They have a separate training staff who can help you. They'll have a separate product coach who can help you uh, so that whenever you get stuck up in any specific uh, screen or while using any specific uh, tool that they have, then it'll be very easy for you to just contact their team. They'll get back to you and all your queries will be sorted. If you want to know more about QuickBooks, don't forget to check out the link which I've given in the description box below. Just click on that link and you'll get to know about the one of the best accounting softwares which has come up in India. I hope you have enjoyed today's video and uh, if you have enjoyed this video, if you feel that I'm giving you some value addition, do consider subscribing to my channel, do consider sharing it with your friends and I hope I'm able to add value and I'll continue doing that in the future as well. That's it from my side for this video. Jai Hind. Bye-bye. <laughs>